guys, I am so happy that we're finally back together again. Yeah. It's like the reunion, finally. James, yeah. Clem, and a highly anticipated guest, Whoa. Lily Mac... Lizzie Mac... <laughs> He's got it wrong twice as well. Yeah, yeah. So How it's not. Actually? It's, it's <laughs> Lizzie, Lizzie, Mac Lizzie, Lizzie right? Yeah. Lily twice. I'm sorry. Uh, so there we go. Should we redo that? No, no, <laughs> no chance. No, no, no. It's gross. Uh, welcome, Lizzie. It's Thank great you. to have you on. Thank um, you. Obviously, for people you. who don't know you, you're a F1 presenter with F1 TV, F1 and indeed. as well as doing a bunch of your own other separate stuff. Yeah, that's it exactly. Give you... us, give us an outline of what you do. I hear you're a podcaster. Do you, Max? I, I see. Yeah. Should yeah. we just do one um, question at a time, fellas? I, yeah. uh, I do have a podcast. Um, it's called Going Purple. Is that why you guys are? Um, Correct. That draw, the, that's why I'm dressed in purple. In, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, there's yeah, a, we, a we bit just, of a theme going on. We here. decided we'd wear purple because we have a Aww. theme of like we have a theme and we don't tell the guest what it is. I see. Yeah, you can you can tell I didn't get the. Yeah, logo. and so we decided that we'd wear purple today, and Marcus has decided that he was going <laughs> to ignore that. Yeah, I went to Harrods this morning. I got a whole lot of clothes because as you do, we agreed that we were going to wear purple, and I bought <laughs> these beautiful, beautiful wow. shorts for Jimbo here, Whoa. and um, he opted against wearing them, which I'm real upset about. Why did you opt against them? <laughs> they're dis- well, they're disgusting for a start. They look good on you, mate. <laughs> that, I think I make them look significantly worse than they look on the rack as well. What um, do you reckon, Clem? Well, I just... The, the one thing for me is that you, you believe that the only place you can actually get clothes from is Harrods, <laughs> which is... Anything from. Like, yeah. when, we needed a mi- when we needed a microphone to do our commentary over the weekend, uh, Marcus just goes, oh, I'll go to Harrods oh. and see if I can get one. I'm like, well, what are you not buying a cashmere jumper? Like, we need Harrods was closed technology. as well, yeah. Damn. But I don't want to tell you how much those pantaloons cost because it was hefty. Don't look at the price tag. Two hundred and five pounds <laughs> for those. Two hundred and five quid. Yeah. Oh, um, interesting. Fantastic investment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, you know, it was on. I thought. I mean, it's collector's piece, really. Maybe we could all sign Fizzly. them and then sell them. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I mean, they were purple. That's the that's the point of it, right? For, uh, for one hundred and ninety-five pounds. <laughs> that would look great when we're sitting on a beach in Ibiza. Those will come in handy, mm-hmm. I reckon. Yeah, for sure. But uh, we've got Clem wearing a suit. Who uh, he looks like Conor McGregor on his yeah, way to a weigh-in. Done a really cool like tie with the tie. Yeah, I appreciate that. I just thought you know wanted to come in looking classy for the boys. Obviously, these guys you know I I try and up the style on this show. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, well, Marcus looks like a you know four-year-old <laughs> just out of his bedroom pajamas, and uh, James will just look. He looks like a proper New Zealander, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a very Kiwi outfit. I'll, I've never seen. He looks. That. He looks like he's just walked out of <laughs> off Queen Street in Auckland, and he's off to Newmarket to go look at some new Adidas Ultra Bursts. Uh. I uh, I have actually watched an episode of Screaming Meals. Have you? Which one? <laughs> all the comments were just about your toes. Oh, <laughs> oh that one. Oh, this horrendous. one. Because that's all I could think about it was just once you see it you can't unsee it so i'm the really griffles. glad you have shoes on today and you're like you're trying to like climb the you table like, <laughs> you, <were> like <laughs> you the could table. practically hear the nail <laughs> scratching the table yeah well, so i had to stop I'm did so, sorry. so was yeah, it actually disturbing enough. to see was, the feet they were just That's really gross. gripping you know? was it really quite yeah long as well. your dad spoke to me about that Oh, about the feet in particular? Yeah, about the feet. He was just like, next time can you just make sure we some fucking shoes? It's so unprofessional. It's oh. funny you say that because we were actually thinking, I was actually thinking about not wearing shoes for this Today. episode. Today? Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you need to get So you think you were thinking about not wearing shoes, not deciding to go with the dress theme that we all decided on, and you got our guest's name wrong twice in the opening <laughs> five seconds of the episode. Are you going to fire me from Screaming Meals? I can. Who would no, you can't, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Who would replace you if you left? Uh, that's actually a good question. Um, Maybe you. Who would we go Oh, for? yeah, great. I'll do it. Probably Maybe we get actually Liam Lawson to be a good shout. Rory, Kiwi probably. Lawson, He'd be the logical choice. <laughs> yeah, Ralph Boschong uh, in the corner. <laughs> Rory's looking very much like Ralph Boschong today. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of hair going on. A lot of hair, just missing the raw, raw the sexual magnetism. Um, so I guess we should dive into things. Now, you're a, um, a Formula One influencer. influencer. Oh, no. No. <laughs> you don't like the influencer word? I don't really enjoy the influencer word. Well, how would you well, best describe yeah. yourself as your I would position? say a content creator. So an influencer. An influencer. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> well, um, I think they're different, though. Th- how do you decide to get sick? Because surely quite a... you guys are influencers as well. Massively so. Oh, fine. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. massively <laughs> so. With, yeah, huge following. Um, Clem, you're getting way more into it. Oh, Can no, I just 100%. say, for the record... In Bahrain, Clem was like, Lissy, please come to the FT pack so we can make a TikTok. And I was like, 
Yeah. I was like, okay. And then it didn't work out. But you were you really on the TikTok train. You love train. your TikToks. Well, it's, it's a sort of a newfound love for me, yeah, you it see. Really is. I, it's like an out of track sort of uh, bit of entertainment for myself, you know, doing a couple of dances yeah. there. Like transitions and, uh, and everything. Oh, yeah, no, I've been really working hard on those. Mm. Um, do you do that yourself or you got someone helping? I do, actually. It's, really? it's a newfound skill of mine. I've just, you know, been practicing. Rory's been giving me a few pointers there and actually been taking the camera around and doing a couple of bits of filming wow. for me. But yeah. No, it I is heard you got into a bit of trouble lately with one of your TikToks. Ah, uh, well, so it's not really trouble. The thing is, nowadays you you can't actually film the cars on track. So many rules. So many rules, so eh? Many. Before you even start the F two season, you get a thirty page document of shit you're not allowed to do. Mm -hmm. um, so one of them is probably mentioning that thirty page contract. <laughs> no, 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 no. It hundred percent is, but you know, half of the racing drivers don't even Pay bother to look. To at I didn't paper. realize there was such a thing. No. Exactly. Point, point proven, and because uh, <laughs> you, you have received it for the last four years. Well, oh. not th not this year, but good, um, good to know. Yeah. It's not even just you as well. Because I was looking, because there's that new rule this year, isn't there, of like drivers aren't allowed to make political statements of their own mm. on their helmets or anything else. But that's all the way down to casting. Mm. So it's that's like, bizarre. Like that's crazy. I have an I have an 11 year old client, and his mum was like, "Oh, do we need to be worried about this or any of that?" And I was like, "Just, just tell the FIA to get yeah. fucked." Well, the thing is, funnily enough, when I was doing my track walk the other day, I got a couple of people walk up to me and saying, you know, are you sure you want to wear this shirt out on track? Because it said backbone. <laughs> what a backbone, by the oh, way. Oh, basically, I was just plugging the whole racky big show. Phenomenal. Usually, but yeah. at the time, uh, yeah, a couple of people came up to me and said, are you sure this is not a political statement? I was like, no. I'm just a backbone. Right, should we grit our teeth and stop talking about ourselves? Yes. Um, <laughs> let's see, where, when did you get started? So it's quite... A, it was a big decision or an instant decision to just go right I'm going to go for this and I'm going to do some social media stuff I'm going yeah. to start posting things about Formula One mm -hmm. well it started in 2021 end of 2021 and I've had watched Formula One for a long time and I noticed there were so many young fans coming in whether it be through Drive to Survive through whatever it was you know um, and I was like, well, all of media in F1 is so traditional. It's all written media. Yeah. And that's fantastic. Yeah. And I truly believe that there will always be a place for written traditional media. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, where is this content that's engaging newer fans and younger fans? And like the intro of the podcast is talking about serious F1 stuff, but not in such a serious way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly it. And just like explaining like Formula One, Formula Two, IndyCar. They're all so technical and there's so many things about them that people, once you understand them, like sport is entertainment ultimately. Um, and there's so many people that want to gatekeep and, but there's this new fan base coming in. We have to cater to them. We have to make them feel included. And aside from that now, well, last year I joined the presenting team at F1 and there's this stat that's like 90, over 95% of people, F1 fans will never attend an F1 race in their life. And so it, for me, it's like making that more accessible for fans as well by showing them as much as I can behind the scenes of what goes on. Um, because F1 needs to change. I think it does. I, think I agree. It needs to yeah. keep evolving. Our ticket prices are way too high. Eh? Ticket oh, it's prices ridiculous. are so high. I saw a stat that you can go to every race on the IndyCar calendar, aside from the flights, for the same price as one grandstand ticket at Silverstone. And they just don't, even that, like, yeah. I'm assuming... That's a, it's, it's a great stat from you, mate. Oh, yeah, that was really... I saw it on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming the experience in IndyCar... Okay, I actually really want to go to an IndyCar race. Like, well, I, like, mm. really... I heard this on your last podcast. Did See, the funny you? Thing is, I'm so intrigued by Indy. The funny thing is, about five minutes ago, as we were talking amongst the four of us, <laughs> she didn't know what IndyCar was. No, so. I didn't say I didn't know what IndyCar was. I said I had never watched an IndyCar race. Yeah, fair enough. Well, you're missing I, out. Um, if, if I may say so myself... Um, every like because i did my first indy car race what three weeks ago mm. something like that chaos it's really? like it's an f2 race on steroids <laughs> like are you are you talking about the race or the event i, I would say everything oh, as a driver yeah, yeah. the media activities yeah. so i mean from the thursday when we arrive to the moment we get in the car for the race yeah. it is jam-packed full of media activities like yeah. really? every fan gets you know, bang for their buck in that respect. Yeah. But then as well, like for the drivers, one thing to the next and so on. Um, but the race itself is like, there's action every single lap, every corner, there's something going on. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, I don't know about you, I know you're an F1 influencer, but <laughs> F1 is like, pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to use that word? Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. Massively oh, boring. But that's the thing, in IndyCar, you're getting so much more, like they cater the fans so much more. One thing yeah. I've heard, I heard someone talk about 
I think it was an IndyCar driver, was like, um, the fans can just go up and meet their favorite drivers. And that's so, like, F1 yeah. doesn't, it needs to have that same level of detail to their fan mm. base. Otherwise, it's going to get to this point where, yeah, the racing is, at times and at certain tracks, it's not as interesting as other series. And, and lots of people have said that. And so they need to keep that in mind. But also, I always think, does F1 thrive on being so inaccessible? Oh. Like, does this, the fact that it's 10 grand to be in Paddock Club for yeah. a weekend, is that actually like, oh, I like that because n I can't meet Max like I can meet, um, I don't know, a driver in Formula E, for example. Yeah. Like I'm working with mm. Formula E this year. The paddock's open. Like anyone can be in the paddock. It doesn't really exist. Yeah. But is that a good thing for F1 or is it actually something that's only going to be so short-lived in terms of bringing interest into the sport? It's hard to say. I think the people who bring like big money into it. So a lot of the paddock suites and all that kind of stuff is probably corporate sponsors and yeah. various other bits and pieces. And so the people providing that money probably really enjoy the fact that the poor people can't come in and mm -hmm. mingle with them. Mm -hmm. I would say that's probably a, a side of it. But then on top of that, like the grant, even the grant, like you said, crazy amount of money just to mm. be in the, in the cheap seats. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so Callum Milo and I, we speak about this often because in IndyCar, you could, I mean, I don't want to advertise this, but if you were a fan, you could literally walk into my driver room if you wanted to. <laughs> like, if you, if you, and, you, and your flat, because you don't lock doors ever. Yeah, we definitely <laughs> shouldn't be advertising that. Uh, oh, nevertheless, so like you could actually, if you walked in with a bit of purpose, no one would question you, and you could walk straight really? into my driver room. Yeah. Um, where, well, I really want to... In Nashville is the only one I can go to. So I'm like really... That's a good one to go to. That's like, a good one. Also, race. it's Nashville. Come yeah. on. But, okay, my real question for you is why have they put the Indy 500? I would say the Indy 500 and the Monaco Grand Prix are two of the biggest standout events on motorsport calendars. Yep. Why have they put them on the same day? Every year. Every year. Every single year. Mm. And That's every year I watch thing. the Indy 500. Yeah. And every year you're at the Monaco Grand Prix. I'm at the... Have you, have you been to one before? Never in person, yeah. but every Monaco Grand Prix, I sit in the Columbus Hotel I've, watching the really? Indy 500. I've done I can both. tell you that's a lie. <laughs> because I remember exactly where you were last year at the time the Indy 500 was going around, and you were definitely not watching that race. Where were you, Marcus? Where was I? I was watching it with j -Hat. I, I I'm, I'm going to throw out a, a wild guess here. Sass Cafe? Yeah. I may have been. <laughs> I Classic. Hope. But no, I've done both. So I've been to the Monaco Grand Prix and the 500 and Le Mans and all, most of the big, He's a big race fans. Yeah. 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 I guess you're asking yourself, who the, who the hell is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I, was, um, I wasn't going to go there, but uh, I was going to, well, I was going to extract it in a... So I, it'd be he, nice if I could at least finish my point before you completely <laughs> discredit my entire career in life, but um, that's fine. Um, I'm James, I'm an insurance broker Hi, from James. New Zealand. Nice to meet you. Um, <laughs> the insurance The broker. insurance broker from New Zealand. Um, and I was just lucky enough to be friends with Marcus when we were both racing Aww. carts. In New we Zealand. used to race carts, race carts together. Do you yeah. live in New Zealand now? No, no, no. I've lived okay. here for. He flies out just years. for the pod. Yes, long commute, <laughs> tough commute. No, um, because I always see in, um, especially in the states, lawyers and like insurance brokers have these little posters with their faces on them. You know, all around the streets in Austin. Okay. It's Thankfully, huge as there's well. no posters. But I was just wondering if you London. had one of those. Oh no, you know what? I, I would love walking down Park Lane <laughs> and there's just James there. That'd the be, insurance broker. The insurance broker. It'd yeah. be disturbing. <laughs> anyway, finish. I'm not sure that, that would go too well. well. We'll get into the insurance broking side of things later. But, <laughs> yeah. um, no, but that, Monaco compared to the 500, chalk and cheese. I would mm. do the 500 nine days a week over mm -hmm. the Monaco. Oh, man. Degree. It's so cool. Like, there's 250,000, 300,000 people there. There's live music. There's an entire concert that happens yeah, in the midfield. There's a club in the middle, apparently. Really? And, like, some people never watch a second of racing. They just churn their face off in the middle of the track. But... Wow. Um, <laughs> It's just so much better, and like you can see all the drivers. You can also see what what 360, 380 kilometers an hour looks yeah. like in person, which is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas Monaco, it's just like assholes. Did you go to Monaco <laughs> last year? I didn't. This will be my first year, but um, I just think again, it's this thing of racing versus the atmosphere and the experience, and also it's so like quintessentially F one. I don't see the Monaco Grand Prix going anywhere, but no. also IndyCar, you know. I think there's so much more to come from Indy mm. and the way, I mean, so it's obviously all um, North America based. At the moment, yes. But why hasn't it, why, why hasn't it expanded? It wasn't, so it's done, back in the day, it did Gold Coast, Brazil oh, no and way. Japan. Yeah, right? that was Those are the three. Yeah, and back, back in the day it was cool. And Canada, one in Canada every year. But. <clears throat> yeah, we also, we race in Canada even at the moment. We race in mm. Toronto. Uh, I think... 
I mean, I don't want to disclose anything, but they do want to I start want to look to. overseas. Uh-huh. But it's it's one of those things where there's not the big manufacturer backing that Formula One has, so it can't just travel around the world, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a shame because the racing's so good. Yeah, like, that's what I've heard. I feel as though if people actually sat down to watch a race, they'd love it. Yeah, I actually, th- I honestly think that the more and the faster people realise that Formula One is now no longer becoming the most talented drivers in the world, it's just the people with the money and that? enough talent to drive the car, let's be honest. Mate, I be can fair. say this, you guys can't. Um, but when people realise that, we're not watching the best anymore, we're just watching the richest. Do They'll think- go to things like Formula E, IndyCar, yeah. and those other subcategories, because that's where, if you look at DaCosta, probably one of the most talented drivers in our generation. Yep. Never made it to F1. Yeah. And the Vries was looking potentially the same way for a long time as well. There's a lot of drivers, Clement Novelak, you name it. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, we're still a shot, mate. We're only two races into the season. Exactly. Where have you finished in your last two races? <laughs> it's going to be a beep. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Rory I just chopped that this. one up, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I'd say my favourite race of last year was when we shared the podium oh. at Zandvoort. The, the, the funny story is actually like... So, this is going back to the fact that, you know, Formula One media does not want... um, Essentially, they like to control the narrative. And Mm. and us boys, we've sort of broken away from the, you know, conventional racing drivers, starting our own podcast, you know, sharing stuff online and everything. And uh, so, Marcus had finished first, I'd finished second after, obviously, a bit of a poor start. And I was a bit annoyed. But uh, (laughs) we were there in the uh, press conference room and... uh, (laughs) How can I say this? Uh, we, we basically have to take a video of ourselves. Like Formula One, like the person will come and give you a phone and you've just oh, basically okay, got to okay. say, oh yeah, hi, this is me and I've finished first and thanks and <laughs> bye. And uh, Marcus was halfway through his and I'd taken a massive chug of champagne. He was as drunk as a skunk at this point. And the problem was, obviously, we don't drink in the old car there and it had been an hour race and I was, I was steamed. I was <laughs> 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 So I'm walking towards Marcus, I go, oh, ice cream in me. <laughs> Basically trying to do a massive plug, which didn't end up happening. But yeah, that was uh, my last memory. There was Zandor. a certain person that ripped the phone from, from, from me and just said, we're redoing it. No screaming no wheels. No screaming wheels. Yeah. Yeah. So but I, this was great. So. Thank you. Thank you. Can we clip that up, Rory? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have a new, um, I've done my research, you have a new podcast in the podcast. Side pod. It's a sort Side of, uh, what do they call it? Like those Russian dolls. Yes. Sort of yeah. Podcasts. <laughs> like now all these content. different like segments. You need your own about insurance. Insurance, yeah. <laughs> huge. Next one, actually. Been, on have you cast. listened to Clem's Wine Corner before? I have seen what Clem's, what Clem's Wine Corner. <clears throat> that is phenomenal. That's it, actually the, the, that's the, impressive <laughs> considering it's not filmed. The highlight. <laughs> The highlight of my Wednesday. Yeah, but you do it like on Instagram sometimes. No, yeah, it's once a, it's yeah. once a week on Spotify. Once a week on Spotify. By yourself, uh, just with a bottle of wine, wherever you are. No, no, no. So it's uh, me, James. We started it off, and then Marcus joined in away, and uh, the last couple he's going to be with us. Uh, and uh, yeah. yeah, essentially, we basically grade a wine, um, delve into the sort of undiscovered side of um, journalism. So we don't stick to you know your breaking news. We really delve mm. deep into the weird news around the world that mm. are happening. So this week, you know, we were talking about the fact that pigeons are almost as smart as men and women, and uh, yeah, as smart as loads you. of other things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because Chat GPT is actually based on the pigeon's brain, but Chat GPT <laughs> can get you into anything these days. Gotcha. Mm. And there was so, that woman with uh, eleven hundred cats. Yes. So we were trying to see how many cats you could stack up on top of each other and how tall that would be as a yeah, building. Yeah, I think somebody wrote in, it was going to be something like a 55-story building. Yeah. You stacked those cats on top of each other just to give you a sort of visual idea of what that would be like as a scenario. So this um, is Clem's Wine Corner. So these are the sort of tough so questions are, that we yeah. ask on Clem's Wine Corner. And then um, we've got the side pod, which is side actually pod. Yeah. basically an actual racing podcast. Because, yeah. Yeah, James hates it with a passion. Why? Oh, uh, have you listened to an episode at all? Yeah, or? yeah I'm so sorry. Yeah, don't I mean, you don't. <laughs> don't worry. Yeah. Why, why didn't you like this? Oh, it's just heavy racing chat. It's a oh, lot of tyres. It's like, oh, I remember that one time when we did a test day in 2017 and you were half a tenth faster in turn seven, but I was like three quarters of a tenth. I got it back in turn sort of nine through to 11. It's just fucking exhausting. <laughs> oh, it's no one's. It's just basically He's Marcus like, and Callum patting themselves on the back for half an hour a week. Pretty. He's actually not far off. Yeah. <laughs> We, Has he been helpful? Is it been helpful having him in Indy? Callum. Yeah. Oh, massively so. Really? Um, do you know Cal? 
at all. I met him in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, he's very easygoing, mm. like very easy to get along with. So he wanted to start a podcast that was the opposite of his wine corner because, well, Clem's wine corner is pretty controversial. So Clem, <laughs> I wouldn't say controversial, I'd just say it's a bit different than your usual your usual listen, let's say. Let, okay, let's just say that, shall we? Yeah. Uh, give it a listen yourself, folks, and <laughs> let us know what you think. Um, and then we decided that we want to do something more for the racing fans, right? Mm. So it's sort of like what you do. Mm-hmm. You go more into depth about what's happening. I mean, I would love to talk about what a woman with 1,100 cats, but uh, it hasn't quite come into the... It's not quite part yet. of your... Yeah. Yeah. Your usual topic. <laughs> it doesn't come up naturally, I find, usually, <laughs> in a Formula One conversation. Uh, um, sometimes it does. I mean, you'd be surprised. Actually, who's, who's, got, who's big on pets in the F1 paddock? Obviously, Lewis has got his dogs. Roscoe. Roscoe. We invited him on the pod, remember? That's right, yeah. The dog never you know, declined. I reckon you'd have to pay him a hefty fee. Yeah, it'd be big. This dog is like a millionaire, you know? Yeah, that's true. Really? I mean, I can't fact check millionaire, but he gets paid for his jobs. Roscoe, Roscoe. Does. The dog, yeah. Yeah, well, I suppose like if he's got a big Instagram following, you get paid. He has from a that, huge you? Instagram. He's he's probably more famous than all I four of us combined. Like a Almost certain. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not me. And that has <laughs> literally knocked Marcus's ego down a couple of pegs. <laughs> Well, we, the first episode we invited him on, didn't we? We thought, wouldn't that be great to have a dog on as our first episode? Yeah, I mean, that was basically anyone who would be willing to come on i mean we had to twist drogovic's arm to get on he wasn't quite a big deal as he is now back at the time i actually ran towards you guys and get, went i actually want to be the first one which was that's right surprising considering the timing shifting gears quickly um wow, I like so that. the yeah pun yeah. intended yeah. um <laughs> you like that one mate yeah i loved it so we i think was it two nights ago i was watching i was watching youtube with my older brother mm. and his girlfriend and it was a video of you came up with Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. Yeah. And it was like, so my brother is a big fan of yours, right? Oh. And he, because we were watching the interview and Carlos and Charles, I don't know why, but they're like, <whistles> like they weren't really concentrating. Uh-huh. They were like talking about fuel or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And James is like, wow, she's doing such a phenomenal job. Yeah. Like considering that. Not this James, the other one. Um, Thanks, James. <laughs> I mean, I think you did a great job as well. If it's, just, just give it two cents on there. And so James is like, oh, and then I said, yeah, I wonder if she would come on my podcast or our podcast. And so I messaged our Clem podcast. and yeah. Clem was like. Well, no, actually, it wasn't exactly true. James turned to you and went, 100 quid, you're not going to oh, get her on your pod. Yeah, yeah, he bet me 100 quid that you wouldn't come on today. So, ching But then, yeah, that's paid for half yeah, of the shorts. I was going to say. <laughs> Money so, buff. Bet. So then Clem. Got on the old... What did you do, mate? Tell us. Oh, I just got the message and I just went... Actually, I can read you the message. Oh, oh God. How many times do you say backbone and douche? <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Clement Novelak. He would have been Steve. I was. I was yeah. actually yeah. in the Emirates <laughs> Lounge in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> he said, want to come on the pod next couple of days. Then he goes, it might be a slightly steamed idea, by the way. <laughs> 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 and he sends me this picture. <laughs> I'll send that to Rory. <laughs> yeah, but we'll yeah. get that up on the screen well, for you. Well, I'm glad you're here. There yeah. we go. I mean, to to speak on that interview, it mm. was um, it was not a script written by me, but there was a lot of points to get through, mm. and they were quite chunky pieces of uh, text to learn. And they're, you're right, they were all about biofuels and all these kind of things. So um, I was laughing when you were asking, like, what percentage of renewable <laughs> fuel, uh, okay. shell, whatever, whatever, and Charles is like. And then, and then I just go what? something like, I don't know. how many wins does, uh, who, which team has the most wins at Zambolt? And he's like, huh? Well, I wasn't expecting that. But um, no, it's good fun. Like, though, who do you think is the, the easiest F1 driver to interview? They're all pretty easy. If you, if you get, the, I think for me, F1 is a, not, it's not a game, but it's, you know, it's 20 personalities. And my job is so, it's so important to understand who I'm talking to and what they you can tell quickly when someone doesn't want to talk about something and you shift it slightly um and if something's if you know if you really you can tell if someone really doesn't want to chat Mm. and that's fine and that's kind of you know you move on and you'll you'll speak to them again in the future so I've never had anyone where I've been like it's like drawing blood from a stone ever and who's the hottest F1 driver (laughs) do you ask all of your guests that no but James is an avid fan of Charles Leclerc yeah for me it's Charles up top um, <laughs> Carlos pretty close second actually to be honest he's got a bit of a nice little Latin spice to him <coughs> um, who else is good looking yeah. Hulkenberg's pretty hot he's kind of got like that kind of hot dad vibe 
Um, same as Magnuson, actually. Both Haas guys, hot dads. Um, then... The question wasn't to you. Oh, sorry, man. I mean... <laughs> Um, Ocon's Ocon definitely the least attractive. Who's the hottest IndyCar driver? Oh, Scott Dixon. Who is the hottest IndyCar driver? I, I, you can't say yourself. Yeah, I was, I was, yeah, I was about to. Uh, <laughs> he's fighting that so hard. <laughs> was on the fucking... All right. Um, I don't know. There's not that many lookers in IndyCar. <laughs> Roman Grosjean. I disagree. Yeah, uh, I would have to disagree with you there, mate. Maybe Helio Castro Neves. Spider Man, he's like 50 years old or something. Mm. Oh, Joseph, he New- Joseph Newgarden's quite dishy. Oh, yeah, that's that's a rumor floating He's pretty around. like yeah. jacked as well. Like. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, have you ever, like, I mean, maybe not, but so do you know any car any IndyCar drivers apart from me? Mm. Or could you name 10? Oh, interesting. I could name a few. Go on then. Okay, let me. Roman Grosjean. Well, yeah, um, okay. That's kind of like, that's a half. Marcus Armstrong. All right, <laughs> okay. um, so we're going to order. Callum Eilat. Three. That's three, yeah. Um, wait, give me a minute. I can I can definitely do that. Oh, fair, Marcus Ericsson. Yeah, yeah. Ericsson. Um, he's a good looking fellow, to be fair. Yeah, he's pretty hot. Oh, what's he called? Colton Herter. Yeah, five. Okay. P- 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 Pato Award. That's six, yeah. Um, Alex Pillow. Seven. I think that's as far as I can go. Dixon. Hmm. Do you know who he is? Mm-mm. Oh my god, he's the like he's the Lewis Hamilton oh, of IndyCar. Yeah, I mean, he's I frothing joking. at the mouth I know right who now. He is. I know. Yeah. He he's the biggest Scott Dixon. I'm <laughs> um, to be fair, I am as well. But. I, like, yeah, I, what he would never like? ask me to, but I would take ten dozen bullets for Scott Dixon. Oh, like uh, he, he is my hero. Clip <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> that. Absolutely my hero. Um, were there people coming into IndyCar where you had looked up to them for so long? Because mm. that I mean, you went, you came from F two, so I mean, uh, there's incredible drivers in Formula Two. But was it like a, when you came into Indy, was there anyone where you, who were you, where you were like, oh my gosh, I get to race alongside you now? Well, I must say, the moment that my uh, Ganassi contract came along, I was like, wow, I can't believe I am going to be teammates with Scott Dixon. Are you so, teammates with Scott Dixon? Yes. Okay. So he's a New Zealander, right? Oh, I, l- okay. I love how she sounded so impressed there, but two minutes ago, she didn't actually well, know who I Scott know Dixon the was. Scott Dixon. <laughs> this is why I want to go to an IndyCar race, though, because I want it to be like, this is like from a person who's never been's eyes. That's what I did with Formula E. I want to do that with Indy and just be like, wh- whoever else doesn't watch it, like, let's go figure it out. Mm. Let's go learn about Scott Dixon. Yeah. Well, Scott was my hero when I was young. Wow. As for James. Still my hero now. <laughs> he dominated the sport for most of my childhood. And obviously, I'm a New Zealander, if you didn't know that. And yeah. I, you know, Kiwis love Kiwis, don't they? Kiwis love successful Kiwis. You're a Kiwi. Yeah. You're a Kiwi. Yeah. 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 There's a bromance here. Yeah, very mm-hmm. much so. More so over here. Aww. But um, they like I'm, to kiss each other occasionally. <laughs> Clem's an honorary Kiwi. I like to yeah. throw that in there. Um, but yeah, IndyCar in general, what for us growing up was Massive. Scott Dixon was on TV winning everything. Yeah. And you probably know who Scott Dixon was before Lewis Hamilton if you were a Kiwi. For sure. Yeah. It's yeah. like the Valentino Ross. I had like his yeah. merchandise. I had like a signed visor of his when I was a kid. Mm. And. I mean, I'd met him once or twice, such a nice dude. Like, he invited me into the Ganassi truck one time when, like, he didn't really know me and just, like, sort of told me about everything, basically. And now I'm sitting on the other side of the table to him at the engineering, in the engineering office, and I'm listening. He's like an engineer in a driver's body. You know, he's, yeah. he's 44 years old, is he? Jesus. I know. Yeah, something like that. He's won six championships. Has he won the Indy 500? He's won the Indy 500, what? Twice? Three times? Uh, so he's like... Yeah. I should know this. I, I've, I, I've honestly considered trying to do a TED talk about how winning six IndyCar titles is more impressive than seven F1 titles. I would agree with you, Ooh, mate. Ooh, interesting. Six titles and matching cars. Yeah. I think if you're Adrian Newey, you're the GOAT because you've won how many championships? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, that's a good That's a good, that's a good stat that we need to research afterwards. <laughs> I think yeah. he's won 10? No, more than 11? that. Way more than that, I'd say. No, I don't think so. Really? Yeah. I would say a few more than that. Really? Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe. Well, he yeah. was with... Was he with Senna? I'm pretty sure he was with no. Senna. He was definitely around. <laughs> I'm sure he was. I did read his book. Anyway, um, so I got to work with Scott, like, directly. And his driving style... This is real boring, James. You'll hate this, man. No, it's about Scott and fun. <laughs> yeah, okay. So his driving style is just like, if you're not sideways, you're not going fast enough. Whoa. Like, he's a proper driver's driver. And... 
we, the other three drivers in the team, so myself, Ericsson and Palou, were very like Europeanized, you know, looking after tires and all mm-hmm. that nonsense. Yeah. So we drive in like such a different way to Scott, but like it achieves a similar lap time. But you watch a Dixon on board and it's like, <laughs> this bloke is pushing. Really? <laughs> like there's that not one point on the lap is he just like settled. He's just f- fully going for it. Wow. So outside of IndyCar, what's on your bucket list as far as categories that you'd like to sort of have a little bit more, not necessarily knowledge about, but just experience in? Yeah, I'm enjoying Formula E. It's mm-hmm. so different. Um, and it's. It, I think strategy in Formula E is really interesting as well. It's a and massive also, crash fest. I, it's crazy. And also, you're right, Like, there's so much talent there. Mm. Um, I am interested by NASCAR, but for me, I think Indy would be like the next thing to really kind of get my toes on the table for it. <laughs> <Your Griffiths. laughs> <Griffiths>. get <laughs> um, what do you find so fascinating about NASCAR? NASCAR? Yeah. NASCAR's so different though. The culture's pretty cool. Like, yeah, I've... for me, it's also the cultures around all of these sports. Mm. Like, what is it like to be there and experience the weekend, but also what's the racing like? What are the personalities like? How is the media interacting with like IndyCar? Because I, I feel like there's a perception that it, you enjoy media more in Indy than drivers do in F1. I'm not sure why that is. Um, and F2, I mean, being in the F2 paddock in Abu Dhabi was cool as well, because it's so different. And it's just, you look around and you're like, these are the people who will be like the big names. In, you know, I think F2, like the tagline is like the stars of the future. That's you guys. So, yeah. Star- stars well, funny of enough, the future. so yeah, you did, you did spend a little bit of time around the F2 paddock. Now, we've discussed this abundantly on our podcast. So obviously we're a food based podcast it doesn't sound like it no that's how it's supposed to like we started around food and essentially did you actually yeah it's called screaming meals oh actually I remember you telling me that and you were like oh we eat all this amazing food and well not on here just in general around the world and uh, yeah so no obviously you've been around the F2 paddock have you had a go at the F2 hospitality I have not is that an invite no, absolutely not. We, we wouldn't wish that <laughs> We on. actually wanted you to compare the F1 hospitality yeah, to F2. to F2. Okay. Yeah, so what, yeah, what's the F1 paddock food like? Is it decent? It's good. I mean, some paddocks are amazing. There was a shawarma stand in, in Bahrain. It was fantastic. There was ice cream. There was a juice bar. Wow. Fantastic. And it's all edible. Like, it's not, you don't look at it no, twice it's just and think like... <laughs> no, no, no. It's all, it's all really nice. Oh but um, why? Why are you saying it? Why are you saying it like that? How oh, was no. the F2 hospitality last weekend, mate? Well, we can't compare it to cancer because we got in trouble for that last right. time. Remember? Don't compare it to cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it at that. It was, you know, I mean, last year we had some, we had some doozies. Last year we had salmon steaks. Now I didn't know those existed, like an actual steak, a patty yeah. of like salmon. A yeah, it was a, literally it was round as Ooh. as a pound coin, it, and it was sort Ooh. of mashed up salmon. Yeah. Um, there was some pasta with, with some glue in it. Uh, there was some. When I, this is just one meal that I had. There was mm. some he beef. thought I was a diva complaining about the F2 hospitality, and then <laughs> until he, he got there. I was, I was separately correct and incorrect there. Yes, you are a diva, but when it came to the F2 hospitality, I was willing to wave the white flag and go, actually, you know what? That's absolutely disgusting. Damn. Yeah. This no, I mean, yeah, traveling a lot, you. <laughs> this is going to get Rory's sitting there. Like, Rory's like, fuck me. <laughs> Rory's <laughs> already not cost looking me forward my to me job. today. Yeah. <laughs> We're, high, we're supposed to be highly tuned athletes, eating plastic for lunch. Yeah, it's pretty embarrassing <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. on your twos behalf. Oh my god, I need to see some like visual aids. Please take. We took a few photos. Time. Yeah, I'm sure we can dig through the archive later on. Good. Um, but on sort of paddock things and, and things like this, is it, something I'm quite intrigued by because mm. I get it a lot and I'm not famous at all. Um, how many people a year who mm. you don't really know or aren't on sort of current good terms with? ask you for tickets to races oh so many yeah so many but it's it there are different there are different approaches it's either the close friend that does yeah. see, come on <laughs> um or it's the just random people yeah uh online i mean i tend not to read my dms anymore to be honest no smart but um it's yeah, a good shout it was marcus does do you? What are you I looking do. for in it's that? It's like 50% no, don't abuse. Answer that. Um, <laughs> it's a lot more abuse than you think, James. Yeah? <laughs> yeah to be, most of it from me, probably. <laughs> well, I or my fake accounts. Do you make, like, fake yeah, yeah, yeah. accounts? I sent you a message that I got recently. Oh, that was, oh, yeah. Nice. That so, was interesting. Uh, well, probably, yeah, no, it's a wise decision. But how did you arrive to that point where you're like, oh, I shouldn't look at my DMs? I think it's just... 
Like people online are mean, right? They're I mean, nasty. already being, to be honest, being a woman in motorsport, it's not, it's not always the easiest thing. Like I won't sit here and be like, oh, you know, woe is me at all. But I sometimes feel as though, yeah, people are just n- nasty. And, and when you'll use it, 8962 yeah. you can say whatever you want you know yeah. so it's best for me i mean to be honest i would say the platform i've kind of like created is so much more good like there are such incredible young girls and and boys out there who kind of get in touch but um i think it's best just not to i just don't want to it's mm. like if you don't know you you can focus more on yourself a little bit yeah mm. um i can't imagine also how tough it is for you guys in terms of performance, like people I'm assuming are so nasty when you don't do, from a results point of view, like a good job. And yeah, you're right, you know, it's it's like external validation. These like some yeah. jobs are just based, I just. Even the good results, like it's crazy. Like the comments in some of the F2 posts really? are disgusting, like horrendous. Like Jayhan, mm. they, like F2 posted something about his double podium at the weekend. Wow. Great result. Wow. And people are giving him shit about, oh, it's his fourth year in F2 and 10 years' time, he's still going to be nowhere. It's just like, really? what the fuck is wrong with yeah, you, Pete? He's I got know. two podiums in one weekend and one did of the toughest championships to, um, in the world. Did you speak to Emma Raducanu about this? I did. We actually had a really long chat. I th- the, the videos that came out were quite short. But she was telling me about how she loves F1 and all this kind of stuff. And I think she had done a hot lap with someone previously. Um, but yeah, I mean, we had like a long chat about, about how people love to undermine... Oh, I don't know. Both of us Success. had a similar similar yeah. experience, yeah. and they just love to kind of undermine and not take you seriously. And and I mean, talking about content creation, and that's why I'm not really a big fan of the word influencer because I feel like for so long, when I did it, it was silly. Like it was like, oh, she's not a proper presenter. Like she's not a real. She's not the real thing. Like, do you know what I mean? Because I was fluent in social media and I was a young woman in motorsport. Mm. And now, so many uh, every F1 drivers on TikTok every like there are so many broadcasters on on it as well and this is what i was saying the other day and because they are you know uh like very well known or whatever it is and they're taken seriously for what they do it's like that's so cool but when i did it it was like that's so silly like what's she doing kind of thing so it's interesting and that's why i feel like it's best just to not know what people because i know what i'm doing and i'm fine Mm. with that and i'll keep doing it Mm -hmm. But people's opinions can sometimes really... I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but for me, if I read something and it actually hits home to me, and it's like, oh, I'm actually really insecure about that, then I'll really think that's the truth, even though it's not. Yeah. You must have a vision, because to like to continue to grind through that period of time when mm. no one was really doing it on social media, you must have had yeah. a vision of what, it, what you wanted to be. Yeah, for sure. I think the vision is coming to life more now. And it's interesting now teams will grant me so much kind of like creative freedom over. We want to work with you, but we don't really know what we want to do, but we want to do something. And to be able to have those conversations at, like as a 23 year old woman, I think it's so exciting to me. And also just showing that you can come as you are, whoever you are, you know. Um, and I'm excited to bring that into other into other series and maybe another sport in the future. But obviously like the niche is so F1 now. And I mm. love F1, I love working in F1. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a it's a weird, it's a, it's an interesting time to be in Formula One. Like I think we're seeing history like truly being made with Max. Like we, I think we're in a mm. Red Bull dominance era now, and seeing how Mercedes is reacting to that is really interesting. It's really cool that you've got a vision because when I got on TikTok, there was no vision at all. Fame. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. There wasn't even that. It wasn't even this. I think my first video was me, like that was the John Cena one. It was a John Cena <laughs> prank call video where it was basically yeah. Well, the best one would probably be this podcast, wouldn't it? Well, we at, when we first started it, well, we first him and I, we had a couple of wines upstairs, and we <laughs> were watching this show called Screaming Reels, mm. and it was like oh, a, it's a fishing show, I've right? I've heard this story. Yeah, and we were like, oh, let's just let's almost like a burner account. Let's just take photos of food <laughs> and write stupid captions, basically. So mm. I used it as almost my like venting platform and i was like right you, Ooh, if you, you go back to like the one. first comment like the first captions it was just me writing stupid shit about him and i having pancakes or something Aww. like in bahrain great times to the point where it sort of got yeah there was too many people following like a it. diary <laughs> well no there were too many people following it for me to be able to write like well the f2 hospitality food was shit today <laughs> something like that so now we just <laughs> so you made it official <laughs> And at a similar time, we said this in the Christmas the Christmas special, but Rory had he had sent me this voice note 
He's like, mate, we need to start a podcast. It's something, <laughs> something like this. It needs to be proper. He'd had a couple of beers. Yes. And, uh, and so we were like, James and I decided, okay, we'll, we'll give it a wee go. We'll see how it goes. We'll take the leap of faith. We'll have it in our vision, like mm. sort of in our, you know, in our own words. And, well. Off we went. Off we went. So we, we almost sort of got pushed into it. Not like in a bad way, but sort of you were already a, a racing driver. I was, mm. a, you know, mates with you. Rory came up with the idea when he was out in the beers somewhere. For you, like how did that come about? How did you? How and why did you get started and why Formula One? Was it like, do you have a group of friends who are into it, family? Yeah, where does the passion come from? Mm. Well, actually, I feel like everyone has one story of like, this was the first race I ever watched. I just remember it being on. It was like a cool thing for us to watch when I was at school. Like, it would always be on and people would talk about it and it was so much like in the Lewis dominance era. And that's why I just think it's so interesting now. Anyway, um, and yeah, I mean, I just started to notice the sport changing a lot and then drive to survive came in as well mm. and so many more people started talking about it and i was like there's something missing here mm. which is someone bridging that gap mm. so that's why it started and then the podcast started after that yeah although that's been a journey like yeah. podcasts are, are like a labor of love don't you think especially i still edit everything myself and it takes <laughs> rory needs <laughs> I a know, job I know. Really um, <laughs> give rory a call but it's I'd imagine yeah. yours are less heavily edited than ours. Yeah, so I'm just yeah. going to go out on a limb there. Wait, do you really let edit your podcast? Oh, out? yeah. Really? Oh, well, Rory yeah. edits so, it down to a T. Well, there's, there's this one wow. and then like, the wine corner. Just a nip it <laughs> Fine. Um, but yeah, that was interesting. I wanted to bring more guests on and, and like tell more stories in longer form. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why that came about. But one thing I was just thinking is that you guys need to like get the screaming reels if there's like a main guy on it or something we, we would love to, get to. Him on oh. well no we've been trying Jason we've been Hoyt. desperately trying so so <laughs> let me tell you right now <laughs> no you're gonna show me a thread of dms that he hasn't it. replied you, to. no 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 no. you're gonna laugh at this he's actually my background <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you what he's, and, he's, and he's my background as well <laughs> yeah. but you wait can't. did you plan yeah. this <laughs> no 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 james are you letting the side die? uh <laughs> yeah mine's my girlfriend oh. so, yeah. <laughs> not, but yeah me and, yeah we'll put it up on the camera wow. but jason hoyt is essentially me and marcus's sort of hero hero well it'd so, be weird if you had scott dixon so you have to have him right? yeah, <laughs> yeah. you changed it before you moved out there didn't you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, so wow. um, me Mental. and James are actually heading to New Zealand after uh, Melbourne. And uh, I want every single fan who's watching this yes. to write a message to the Horaki Big Show. Horaki yeah. Big at, Show. At Horaki Big Show on Instagram. H-A-U-R-A-K-I. No, H-A-U. <laughs> Is that correct? Oh, you know, you, know, you got it right. Sorry. Boom. Message them and say they want Clem and James on their radio show. Please. Thank you. And Marcus can tune in over the phone. It's like a group effort for this podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Massively so. I yeah, mean, I'm sure they'd be thrilled to have us having had hundreds of people spam their inbox and say, please have these guys on. They're not, <laughs> they're not going to hold that against us at all. No, 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 not at all. Um, but so, yeah, yeah no, that's how we got started. And yeah, Jason Hoyt, massive inspiration to us. Lee Hart as well. Obviously instrumental in uh, Screaming Reels, which is a sort of early to late 2000s fishing show. Mm. Um, so obviously you can see the seamless transition between that and to a motorsport podcast. But yeah, So course. they're fishermen that never catch any fish. So what's the show about? It's them. It's just frustration. We'll, we'll show you later. <laughs> um, but coming back to what you said about like doing all your own editing and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I love, like I said, I listened to your last mm. podcast as well. And so you talked about how you're sort of feeling the pressure of it and it was all kind of, it's a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. Do you ever feel a little bit of guilt as to like, I'm doing something I love and I'm so worked up about it. Why am I feeling this way? I should be loving life mm. and all that stuff. I love life. Mm. <laughs> Guys. Great. <laughs> Hold uh, on, yes. <laughs> Sorry. I, um, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> we'll put that as like the title. We would have thought that was saying. Lissy McIntosh and how she loves <laughs> life. life. <laughs> Do you have uh, live, laugh, love up in your kitchen as well? No, that's my Insta bio. Okay, fair enough. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, it's tough. Like growing... Like the amount of growth that's happened over the last, even year, like this time a year ago, I hadn't even joined the F1 team. I it's would, a meteoric rise. I would have been like, no way, like you're joking, you know? Mm. It, and no one teaches you ever how to, once there's this many people, kind of eyeballs or whatever, how you should be and how you should, like you don't get media trained, you know? Um, so, so you never had any media training? 
No, not for like kind of being a... You are so talented then. You are, you must be. Because me and Marcus were sitting upstairs, right? We were watching your podcast. Oh, okay. <laughs> really? <laughs> and we were like, mate, she can talk the wheels off her bike. Yeah, Legs off the chair was the words I used. Well, wow. wheels off a bike for me, but yeah. still, yeah. No, it's like, wow. I mean, so, some us drivers, drivers, we were, me- I don't know about you, but in Ferrari, we were media trained. Yes. Well, what does that look like? Is it like you've got media training today? We had, yeah, we literally. So on they'll our ask you a question and you've got to give your answer and then you work on the answer. Similar to this, we had like cameras up, oh. we would have a big TV there and they would ask us ridiculous questions like, okay, Marcus, why were you eight tenths off Lungard in this session? Please explain. And so I would go ahead and be like, I almost at one point just like slapped the teacher and walked out like it was <laughs> that bad. So they'd give us real shitty questions really? and then they would ask, wow. well, they'd train us to how to say nothing basically i don't yeah. know if i should be saying yeah. this no, I don't no they sacked you years ago fine <laughs> yeah to be fair they did <laughs> uh thankfully so um but it was so like they basically wanted us to say nothing mm-hmm. uh, but they also were teaching us how to express ourselves um very enthusiastically so like mick for example mick yeah. schumacher he's like he's full of great insight and information right but the way he says it is quite like it almost seems like he's sad yeah. when he's not. He mm-hmm. just doesn't know it. So they put it on the TV and he'd be like, wow, I didn't realise I look so sad. They make you watch it. Yeah, we have to watch it all together. Oh, that must be the most annoying thing. You know, I've never watched one of these podcasts back. I've, I don't watch my... I can't like, listen to my voice. Where, when Rory does the editing, I pray he does a good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> well, for us, we would like... So all of us would be like in a room. Well, all the F2 drivers would be in a room. And we would just sit and watch each other's interviews. Oh my god! Where they'd be asked because we'd we wouldn't be in the room when they were asking the questions. So sometimes that'd be like getting me and Schwartzman to like butt heads or something, and then we'd watch it back. And it would basically they were just trying to make us really have you know facial features and whatnot. And then so how the fuck did they deal with Kimmy? <laughs> well, well, Kimmy, that is a good question. I don't think Kimmy you know, no, didn't give a fuck. You know. <laughs> That's why he's so good, because he wasn't media trained, right? Mm. Yeah. Like, imagine... That's so interesting. But how much do you think that genuinely takes away from, like, who you are as... Because you start... Like, I look at the guys who've come into F2 now, um, and they're so, like, sweet. And it's just like, are they really... And they're so young. But it's like, at, at such a young age, do you think you kind of taught not to be yourself then? Well, that's why we sort of started this podcast, isn't I'd it? I'd say, it's like, have, having known you since you were, what, 11? Yeah. And then, be- obviously, before Ferrari, during and after. Mm. Like, it definitely took oh, a bit of pep out of your step. It took, really? it took a... To be fair, I think it was bad 2017, 18. Because mm-hmm. I was, like, a proper Kiwi. I'd have... My accent, you can't hear it now, but... Um, the way I was expressing myself was, like, Jaden Dodge. Uh, who, oh, Jaden. You don't know who Jaden is. But no, can I just point out, no one does. No one knows. You. <laughs> that's fine. More people it, know who I am than Jaden Dodgers so in that saying. Jaden's so. a friend of mine in New Zealand who's just an absolute weapon. Mm-hmm. Has lots of fun and talks a lot of shit, basically. And I was a bit like that when I was younger until I arrived into the red team where I was sort of made to be um, little Leclerc in a way. Mm. So Interesting. Yeah, I guess it does sort of dampen your personality a wee bit. Yeah, but I think it's changed a little bit, though. Because the Drive to Survive sort of showed behind the scenes, and I think drivers actually have personalities when if you looked at F1 like 10 years ago, you would just say, man, they're all so They're boring. robots. Mm. And it comes back again to that sort of unaccessible kind of thing of like you, you'd you see them not on TikTok and Instagram mm-hmm. and various other things. You'd see them on Sky Sports and mm. you'd know nothing about them. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like it, when you work for F1, do they give you sort of guidelines on what questions you can ask? Um, there are things like we'll have a briefing of things like, you know, be sensible. And mm. if there's something that's happened. This is actually extremely important that you tell us this because we've been trying to get F1 drivers on this podcast and there's been a firm denial <laughs> from pretty much every single Every thing. PR manager. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so why do you think that is? Oh, because we get them to open up maybe. I don't know. Yeah, no one, li- no, no one likes the truth because the truth hurts sometimes. That's it. Like, it's just, um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I get interviewed, I just pray that they ask me a good question. Like, something like, uh, the best question I ever got in a press conference. 
So, Marcus, you started a food blog. Please tell us what your favourite food is. And that was like, I talked for like three minutes. Did you? I was just... I think Actually, it's a theme that people have picked up on now, even in IndyCar, that even when you're asked a question that's got nothing to do with food... <laughs> I revert to food. You will bring it back. <laughs> what is your favourite food? Uh, and your least favourite uh, It's food. bananas on toast with peanut butter. Yeah, that's not far no, off, actually. It really? I love peanut butter. <laughs> so good. What's your least favourite food? Far out. We should have got a peanut butter tasting here. You should have told oh, me that. Oh, I love peanut butter. I was going to do that on Sunday My when favorite. we were commentating. I was going to get a bunch of peanut butters and like do a tasting. I, I reckon if you got all like the top five brands, I could tell you which one was which. Okay. All right. Not uh, I'll one. challenge you to that. Do you know okay, what? Fine. That is the video for later. <laughs> Alrighty then. Um, avocado or toast? Mm, That's yeah. a goodie. Cracker. Even James can actually do an avocado on toast at the High back speed. of the car. Wait, is it whilst true going that around you the track. got in trouble? <laughs> No, it's not actually. Oh. I don't know. Who's told you this? Some, so, I don't know. I heard something that you guys were like speeding whilst trying to make. <laughs> oh, no. We were, oh, on no, was, we were on a track. We were on a track. We were on a track. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we were on a track. No, so that was fine. I'm I surprised mean, we didn't get in trouble, to be honest. I'm surprised we, we were in trouble with already. your dad. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only thing like, it was your dad's car. And I, I did an actual lap driving myself. Wow. And I think it what was. What were you driving? Uh, it was a Mercedes GLC. It's cool. So heavy. Like. Real heavy, and I think your, your old man gave you a ring. It's just, just let him know that, you know. Most scared I've ever been in my life. Up. Really? Yeah. yeah. With old Jimbo I behind the wheel. That. I do. I was there. <laughs> um, but actually, your lap was pretty terrifying. Rory can attest to that as well. He was in the back seat filming. Oh, poor you. <laughs> no helmets. I don't even think you had a fucking no, seatbelt on. No, we had no lids. <laughs> <laughs> Rory was actually turned around As I'm like sideways going through like. Oh, you had a massive snap at like T6 as well. And I, <laughs> my heart was in my mouth. Oh, that's a good question. Have you ever been on a, on a track before? Yeah. Like, in I the have. passenger seat. I, Nico Hulkenberg drove me around DBX 707. Hot dad. And, um, <laughs> and I just, it made me realise how strong your guys' necks are. One thing I would say to that though is when you've got a steering wheel that you're obviously using to hold propping, on to, like that up, does yeah. actually make a, a reasonable amount of difference. Do you want to try driving an F1 car? No, we're not talking about F1 cars, Marcus. We're yeah, about two seater cars. I really want to go in um, some kind of single seater car, but I mean, I don't know how that would work. We should, we, we, maybe we can we make can, that happen. Really? Yeah, okay, we'll shake definitely. On it. Let's do it. Can we yeah, get Lissy on the Honda go around thing before the Indy car race? And Nashville? 100%. Okay, I'm coming to You'll Nashville. get Mario Andretti to drive you around the track. <laughs> he's a bit older, uh, but he's won a few championships <laughs> in his day. <laughs> yeah, he knows how to turn a wheel. Um, but then yeah. again, we could probably do something at Silverstone, because I think there's like some driving experience at Silverstone that I want yeah. to... Yeah, do you get to go to any F1 races now? I will be there with bells on the minute Clem invites me. Aww. I want some Trident tickets, man. Come on. Anytime. Well, we had a couple of other questions. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, um, Oh, you wrote questions down. Oh, yeah. Look no. how much Clem looks like Conor McGregor right now. <laughs> Doesn't he just? <laughs> you Top of like the morning toy. Jacked. You're a dead man walking. <laughs> douche, douche. 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 Douche, douche, Where's my questions? <laughs> no, actually. No, I've what? asked all mine. Wow. Yeah. I actually, I wrote down one question for you. Really? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. What is your daily morning routine? Wow. That's the best question you can come up with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, well, when I'm at home, or yeah, when yeah, I'm at yeah, a race? yeah. Like, what's your usual? What's your skincare? What's your? Oh, okay, fine. So I wake up. Yeah. And I, I make myself drink a whole thing of water before I check my phone. Because you know, hydration station. You make water. No, no, I make yeah. myself drink. But you the water. tap water. Yeah, I'm In a London. tap water girl. Yeah. Brave. Ooh, same for me. I did. Yeah. Come on, it's great fun. minds think alike. That's not true. I, mean, I drink a bottle of water, two bottles of water before I have my first coffee. Yeah, what I beg to differ because all that, all them glass bottles you got upstairs. Crates of sparkling water yeah. that arrived to your house. You drink sparkling water first thing in the morning. <laughs> it's really strange. Marcus drinks sparkling water exclusively. No, you do not. Yeah, when I'm on the bike, I'll have sparkling water. And what do you have in your car? Can you choose? Sparkling water. He's got wine, actually. Actually, yeah. got SOS hydration. Yeah. It's yeah, nice that promotion water. ended three pods ago, Marcus. Um, what do you have, Clem? What do I have? In your car. In the wagon. Bit of vino. Oh, shit. I bet you do. You've got Pinot Noir. <laughs> From the Pinot Noir. No, after the race, after the race. No, in the race, just a bit of water. Fine. Well, I drink my water, and then I get up, you know, brush my teeth, all that, all that jazz. Then I like to have a coffee and plan out my day, you know. And then just see where the world takes me, really. Have a shower, do my skincare. I'm very, I'm very into my skincare. And then we'll get going. What's you know? your routine on that? I need, I actually, I need a skincare routine, so I've not had one for 25 years. Maybe stop drinking alcohol. <laughs> no. Um, any, any better ideas? 
you need a nice cleanser. Go to Harrods and pick out your favorite. Yeah. And a okay. nice moisturizer. And you need SPF, guys. Otherwise, you're going to be wrinkly at 29. You are. Okay. Look at Marcus. Am I? I? Look at the hairline. The hairline is pulling reverse. Uh, yeah, we, really? we, we, <laughs> need, we need fine, a hair loss well. sponsor. Desperate. Oh, please. You, 100%. No, you, I mean, none of your hair loss. Clem's fine. Hers is terrible. Mine's just going I down. hide mine. Uh, me and, me and Callum Isla, we've it's become professionals at so hiding much. our hairline. But uh, no, mate, I would just say just drink water because that's what I do. Is this your the skincare routine advice? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and a bit less of those strong bows. No, again, no. Um, Not doing that. And, uh, and you're good to go. And, and yeah. Your morning routine sounds very regimented and quite healthy. I try to make it yeah. like that. That's the one thing that's really important to me is being really well prepared. Because mm. if, if you know what you actually, if you really know what you're doing and what you're talking about, you can quite, like in Bahrain, um, it was, I needed to be in the F2 pit lane. And well, they were like doing the F2 grid walk. And I was like, okay, I think I can, you know, Real, and then they would do, do the F3 grid walk. That didn't end up happening. But with F2, I was just like, the more I know, the more it will just come to me when I'm kind of filling like 12 minutes or whatever it is. Um, that was really cool though. I, was, I didn't do the grid walk, but I was right in the pit lane before you all went out. Um, I was trying to find you, but I couldn't, couldn't see where you were. Because obviously the pit lane is the same, so I couldn't really figure out where Trident was. Right at the front. Where do you? Whatever. So, um, in the pit lane, not on the grid. Because I imagine... <laughs> <laughs> I imagine most of our viewers would... They almost like wish they were doing your job. Yeah, like, yeah a lot of people say that to me. Because you get to directly speak to F1 drivers. And is that annoying when you're really stressed out about your job? Uh, what? Where people say, oh, I wish I had your job, and you just no, go like, no, you don't. I think the only thing that it doesn't irritate me, but the only thing I think is a misconception is like your job is so easy. Mm. I'm like, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes, you know. <laughs> to be honest, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like the amount of TikToks you put out a week, yeah, right? Every day. Well, I try to do it every day. Exactly. Me, me trying to figure out how to do one. Like mm. it might look cool. Yeah. It takes me two and a half days, three days of like, really making sure everything's sweet as. We can, oh, we can get me. you down to two hours. Oh, no, but it's really difficult. And so when I see them, <laughs> them TikToks coming out all the time from you and like other, other, influ or like other content creators, as we may say, and I'm just like, I am so, so slow. But why? Yeah, why? Oh, because I don't know, man. Technology. I liked your vlog that you did. That was fun. Which one? Which one was that? It was like, come with me, fly with me to Bahrain or something. Oh, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That took... Show Three the days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, like, you got to remember to do the videos and that. And, like, you oh, know, when I'm walking through the airport, I'm not thinking about life. my videos. We, had, we did a day trip to Paris, and I tried to do something like that for that. And, and like, my phone kept just melting down and breaking, really? and it wouldn't work. It's, and it's oh, hard, horrendous. man. And also with the longer ones, like, you know, the really edited ones, a lot of info, they can take, like, eight hours, nine, ten hours. Start exactly. And, that, uh, first and even up, just, like, managing... Like my myself as well, it's like you know. There's so much that goes into like the meetings and the prep and like creating strategies around certain things, and that takes a lot of time. But I, it doesn't bother me that uh, it's it's very sweet that people are like I want to be like you when I grow up. My thing is like be like be like you, you know, because mm. I don't think it's good to like mold yourself so much around one person. I mold myself to Marcus Armstrong. Oh, fine. Okay. Mistake, mate. Yeah, Jason Hoyt. Let's see how that works out. Um, do you do you feel that you're only gonna stick to like when? Okay, so your vision. Mm. Let's. I might just ask it more simply. What's like the five-year plan? Yeah. What's your five-year plan? I knew you were gonna say that. Everyone always asks me that, but you I have no don't idea. have one. I definitely yeah. don't have one. Like, yeah. if you had, like I said earlier, like my year plan a year ago was not this. It would have been like, oh, maybe I can do that one thing, and so who knows? I I I often think the world is. When you're in the world of F1, indie, motorsport, it can seem so... Everything is about that. Mm. But the world is so much bigger. Exactly, you know? yeah. And we, I think we all have to remember that. So who knows? But Spe Speaking of the world, is there, any, is there a destination that the job has taken mm. you where you've just thought, after being there, never again? Unless I absolutely have to, never No. Again. Abu Dhabi was, like, very fun. You know, there was just Didn't a lot... did you come out with us on... You were at the after party with us, weren't you? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember much of that. Either. It was I a very blurry night. <laughs> but you were on our table, weren't you? Yeah. Oh, I great. I don't remember seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember seeing you. I remember seeing you, and I remember you. 
I, I left I relatively early because I had a mate with me from the insurance market um, who got so drunk with all the excitement of being around all the drivers and all that kind of stuff that I literally had to wake him up on the table to let him know that Vettel had just walked past him. And your fucking sponsor, who like, yeah, we'll pay for everything, left after half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what happened there. That wasn't part of the deal that I organised. Uh, uh, yeah. You having a great time. I was having a great time. Yeah, you were. <laughs> we might kick that out of secret. Yeah, we'll cut that part. Um, great. Well, uh, yeah. I guess we can start to think about part two, no? I think part two has already started a long time ago, mate. <laughs>